and welcome to my updated EDC video. I took a look at the uh, EDC, the comments to the EDC 5 video, and a lot of people made some interesting ones about uh, the, the size of the wallet I carried, so I reevaluated it. It's not like I don't listen. And I reevaluated it and I changed out some of the things I do. Now, the purpose, first of all, of my EDC is to uh, uh, carry the tools I use in my everyday life. I have three careers. I'm in sales during the week, I'm in firearms instruction on the weekends, and I also host several talk shows on the radio and do research and, uh, and uh, historical research trips for that, so I carry tools appropriate to those three professions. Among them, of course, is journalism. Uh, I want to do the EDC in a way that, so that I was carrying as little weight as possible. Over a period of time, my EDC started out at 17 pounds with the amount of stuff I was carrying. I've weighed it just before this video, and the entire loadout I'm about to put on the table in front of us is down to 7.5 pounds. Some people would say that's a lot. I would say it's a small portion of my body weight. Uh, what I wear. Usually, I wear business attire most days. I'm in a tie, nice business slacks. Today I have on, a, it's a Saturday, I have on jeans, but uh, on, most of the times I have on nice business slacks, decent shoes, a tie. In Arizona, where I live, I very rarely have a sport coat on to cover anything because the climate about nine months of the year doesn't support wearing anything heavier than a shirt and tie. And sometimes not even the tie when it gets into the dead of summer. So my EDC has to go with all those modes, and I don't want to have to change my EDC to fit my my, to fit my clothing. The EDC also has to work with so that it doesn't wreck my clothes, it doesn't tear holes in my pockets and such. As a result, I have kept it to where most things are only one item in each pocket and I've spread out the load throughout my body. Um, no pocket should have more than one or two items in it, the possible exception being my shirt pocket, which I'll demonstrate in a moment here where I have two pens and where I have two pens and also my phone is carried in this pocket. We'll get to it onto the EDC. Uh, first of all, a successful person has got to have a good writing tool. I carry the Parker Jotter. The reason I like a Parker Jotter is two important reasons. Number one, it feels good to write with. Number two is they, there's a lot of cartridges available for it in a lot of places if I run out. This one is a black fine point. <clears throat> I like to write my notes and other things in fine point because it doesn't look sloppy when you're, uh, I'm left-handed, and when my left hand goes over the notes, it doesn't smear them all over the page. However, there are times when it's a real handy item to have a second pen, and this one writes in blue, and it's broad point, and this I use for signature so that you can delineate between an original and a copy when it's signed in blue. Also, if I hand a customer a pen to sign something, and I need to write something down while they're doing it, I still want to have a pen in my hand. The other reason is, and this is kind of a subtlety, but this has what we call a military clip on it, which means that when it's in your pocket, it sits all the way down in the pocket, like so, and it doesn't stick up much. I already carry enough junk to, on me so that I look like the Spanish Armada walking down the street, and I want it, I want it to bristle. I want it to bristle as little as possible. I want it to stick out as little as possible. Um, <clears throat> I also, because I live in a very dry climate, because my hands are subject to cracking very easily, I carry in my left front pocket, I carry a, uh, a bottle of uh, hand lotion, refillable. Sometimes, depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing, I'll substitute a bottle of hand sanitizer for it, or occasionally both. Um, next item is something I carry for work, and this, I'm going to show you where I'm bringing it out from, is in, carried in a belly band. First I'll show you the belly band, a similar. This is a belly band. It's an elastic. It's an elastic band that goes around the waist. Or if you're built like I am and your waist is a little bit too waistline's too large for it, you can wear it up high. And it's got a Velcro closure. And on the inside, there's a couple of holsters so that you can carry left or right-handed. There's a magazine pouch. The one I have on also has another pouch in it, which you're going to see demonstrated in just a second for where I carry other things such as spare magazines and a camera. And I'm going to take my camera out. This is a 4 megapixel digital camera, and the reason I carry a camera separately from the phone is the phones, the cameras and phones are usually not good enough, although they're getting better for what I do. I have a photo journal, I do some photojournalism with it, and so, and also, the other thing about this is it has a removable chip in here and an SD card, and the SD card is much easier to upload than is pic taking pictures out of the phone, at least at the current state of technology that I own. So this is why I carry both this and the phone and the, the uh, camera in the phone. Um, next is I have a coin purse. The reason is I try 
to make it so that as few things jingle as possible so I can contain the coins in my pocket. Also, although I've never watched an episode of MacGyver, I do keep a safety pin in here. I also keep my earplugs in here. Now, I know people are going to say that's not sanitary. I use hand sanitizer to clean them before I use them at the range. But I also keep a spare $5 bill in here, which has come in handy. usually keep a couple of dollar coins in there, which are real handy as well. And the back of this has some storage capacity on it. Well, uh, I carry in here a lighter, although I do not smoke. There's a, a small Bic lighter in there and also a spare Leatherman tool, which I'll cover in a little while. Next are come the tools. I, I have just switched out. I used to carry the Leatherman Juice. I just switched out to the Leatherman CX. And the Leatherman CX is an interesting tool. It only has three, uh, three devices, maybe four on it. It has a, uh, a knife which is accessible to the uh, to right-handed right -handed hold. However, I've found out that I can open it because I am left-handed. I can open it left-handed pretty easily like so and holding it kind of like a spider cone knife. It is doable to open it one-handed. Also, the main tool on it is the pliers. And it's got a standard Leatherman opening pliers. And the other tool that it has on it is a screwdriver. And there's a blade inside of here which you can switch out. It has either a standard blade or a Phillips blade. I find most screws that, I are gonna, that I'm going to tighten are Phillips heads, so I leave the Phillips blade in there. The other interesting thing about it is when the tool is closed, it has a hole through which you can put an S-hook, and that's where I carry my keys. Also, on, I think every ring of keys should have a flashlight on it. I've seen criticism in the commentary on the EDC-5 video that we did, the previous one, of you carry too many flashlights. But let me explain. This weighs a, probably about a quarter of an ounce, and it's incredibly bright. It really is bright. As a result, it costs me almost nothing in weight added to my EDC. But the reason I believe every single keychain should have a flashlight on it is, when are you most likely to need a flashlight? When you're trying to find a lock, maybe your light in the driveway doesn't come on, or your, your porch light isn't on, and you're trying, you, don't want to, uh, you don't want to fumble with your keys. This way you've got the light in the same hand and at the same angle as the keys, but it costs you nothing extra in weight, and it costs you very little in money. These lights are available for eight bucks a piece. So if you had a few spare of them just laying around, it would be a good investment. This is a little S-hook I purchased for under $2, and I can now leave the tool on my belt with this clamp, and then I can, as I need them, I take these keys in the order I use them, and by the way, the order, my house key is on the outside, and my car key is on the other outside, so if I ever need those keys in a hurry, I know exactly where they are, and they're in order on both key rings that I carry. This is a bugaboo of mine. I think that it's the height of unpreparedness to have only one set of keys. The reason is because if you lose that one set of keys, you're out of business. You're either locked out of your car, locked out of your house, or you can't get into something you need to get into. As a result, I carry here on this side, I carry another set of keys. It's a spare. It's a duplicate set of the others. But you'll notice these are not in my pocket. This is in my belt line. I've chosen to put a four, put them on a 4.7's flashlight. The reason I use this 4.7's flashlight is, number one, it's pretty bright. It has three settings, a, a, a pretty dim, a medium, and a very bright setting. And it also, and that's the very bright setting, it also has available on it a disorienting strobe as well, which serves as a backup to the other disorienting strobe light that I have. And I will get, there's the disorienting strobe. So I have a backup light that does a whole bunch of different functions. The other thing about this is, is this put down my pants is it serves as a very good anchor for the keychain. It's very little likely to lose it. This clip hooks to my pants and then the keys hook on the outside between my pants and my belt. So they pretty much disappear. It doesn't show that I'm carrying multiple sets of keys, but I am, and also I'm not encumbering a pocket. Also, when I need to get to them, it's important in my way of thinking of things that one set of keys be to my left hand, the other set of keys be to my right hand. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm coming into my house, my hands are almost always encumbered with something, and I don't want to have to drop stuff or change hands to get in or out of either a car or, a, uh, or my house. One thing is, part of EDC and part of, uh, I'm a, one of my jobs as a defense instructor, a certified uh, concealed weapons instructor in the state of Arizona, is to try and make the reason we practice for a thing is so that when we get so scared, when it happens to us that we can't think, we simply revert to our training. And if you're in a hurry to try and get in or out of something, you can simply put your hand where your keys are, either left-handed or right-handed. The same thing's true of a pocket knife, too, and I'll get to that in a minute. Then it's a much better way to live. It's a more efficient, in my opinion, way to live. 
and your opinion may vary, but that's my opinion. Uh, the next is the small uh, Leatherman tool. This is the Leatherman squirt, it's, uh, I think the S4 squirt. This one is a pliers, and in it, now you might think, well, why am I carrying two pliers? And the simple answer is, first of all, this has tools on it that the other Leatherman does not have, but second of all, if you're ever tightening a screw and the nut is turning on the other side, you will suddenly realize you could have used that second set of pliers, but the second one can be much smaller. All it has to do is hold something very small. This will also serve as an excellent tweezers if you get a sliver or such, and so it uh, stops you having to carry a third knife like a Swiss Army knife with a tweezers on it. The other thing is, although small, this has the scissors on the outside and it's right here and it's plenty good enough for trimming your nails if you get a hangnail or something like that or cutting a, a tag off of something and the other very very important thing that it has for me is a file I use a file fairly often on my nails and a few other applications if I cut off a uh, zip tie and there's a sharp end I'll file off the edge so I don't scrape myself on it so this is a very handy thing to have I also have a version of this that has the knife blade removed from it and something else put in its place and as a result that one this one won't but the other one I have will fly on airliners this one by the way carries in my right front pants pocket the only other thing that's in my right front pants pocket is my pocket knife pocket knives one to each hand the on the left side the my uh, skeletal has a knife on it and so it's available to my left hand on my right side in my right front pocket is my um, spider co military and I am going to retire this knife very, very soon because I'm going to replace it with an HAK. An HAK goes on the belt in what they call a bikini kit clip over the belt, and it has a two-fingered, it has a two-fingered handle, so your draw on it is simply like that. That will mean that I'll only have one thing in this pocket, which will be my uh, uh, my coin purse, and nothing else will be in the pocket, and also this clip won't be wearing out my pants pocket uh, when I go to the HAK. That'll be my next add-on to my EDC. Um, not all the blades that I carry are defensive. This I would not consider to be a defensive blade. It's too slow to get out, and it's not in a constant place. This blade, however, is a defensive because it's carried on my right side and I'm left-handed and so my right-handed knife defends my left side in the case of a gun grab if I happen to be carrying a gun on my left side. Uh, when, it, uh, when it comes to my EDC for walking around, of course you've got to have a wallet. I've got a wallet that's about as slim as I can make it. It's got some interesting things in it. For instance, I have in here a magnifier and uh, I'm of an age where I'm uh, at the edge of needing glasses but the magnifier suits my purposes. It's flat and it's somewhere in here in this wallet. I also have my insurance cards in here. Here's my magnifier, which I keep in the wallet, magnifying sheet. It's inside of something so it doesn't get scratched. There's the magnifying sheet. And I also keep some band-aids in there and my copy of the Scout Oath. My EDC is based on the Scout Oath to be prepared. It's not based on some fantasy, but reality. Also, I keep my business card folder because my my wallet will get too thick if I start putting all my business cards in it, and I have business cards from several different enterprises in here. However, I also use this as a catch basin for when I get a receipt. Whenever I uh, sign a, a, a debit card receipt, I put it in here, and then at the end of my day I clear it out so I know where everything is. I don't have receipts, so my pocket's all cluttered up. One other item. Everyone needs a timepiece. I don't wear this watch every single day because it's too big and cumbersome. I have a dress watch, but this being the weekend, it's the one I happen to have on. So Casio has altimeter, and uh, and I don't fly much, <laughs> but it has an altimeter on it. It also has a barometer. It has a compass in it, which is kind of handy. The other thing I've done is I've put a uh, Streamlight Nano. I made a little leather holster to go on here, and I secure it with just a uh, very simple uh, a tie wrap. And then uh, it is a Streamlight Nano. Uh, that's a little uh, a little extra. This is the watch I wear when I'm at home all the time, when I uh, come home from my business day. I put this one on specifically because it has the Nano Streamlight Nano on it, on the band, and it uh, is kind of handy. When it comes to defensive tools, I like having something that is less than lethal force on me. My choice is the ASP baton. As you can see, it sticks out a little bit, but not terribly much. It sticks out about inch and three quarters, maybe two inches here and about an inch here. On top of it is a tactical flashlight. And the ASP baton I've chosen is the Airweight 16 inch. So when you flick it out, it comes out like so. It can be used as a defensive tool, although frankly my main uses for it are uh, access type tools. 
This I use as a reach tool. If you've ever had something fall under your car, especially if you're wearing nice slacks, you don't want to put your foot down on your knee down on the ground and get your slacks all dirty, you can sweep underneath a car like this, get your keys or anything else that rolled under it out. Or if you're doing laundry and your sock a sock falls between the washer and dryer, it's awfully handy to have something this narrow. It's narrower than even than a finger and it has a much longer reach. But the other side of it, the other end of it, is a uh, flashlight. This one I leave set on disorienting strobe and so that it is a tactical flashlight. The neat thing about this is you can simply unscrew the flashlight from the baton and if you're in an environment where the baton is, uh, is uh, implement, uh, implementa non grata you can leave that put away somewhere else and still carry this. It still makes one heck of an impact weapon on either side makes an impact weapon. It's completely legal to carry it on an airliner and I know in no jurisdiction where it's against the law to shine a bright light in somebody's eyes if they're approaching you in a hostile way. So it's a great tool to have and uh, these are available at gun shows. Uh, this is a Chinese knockoff of uh, American Light. It's called, this one's called LumaForce. There's also a company called Four Sevens that makes some flashlights similar to this. This is the only one I know of that works with this switch. Unfortunately, these switches aren't made anymore. It came from ASP, the people who make the baton. But they don't make that style anymore. They had some problems with them. And Boy, if anybody ever finds me a source for these, I'll pay you handsomely for getting me a couple spares. Charles at LibertyWatchRadio.com, please. It's not carried in the pocket that the baton is carried, again, in the left belt line. So, again, I don't want to encumber my pockets, and I don't want to load myself down. This one also is an alloy baton. It's not steel, so it's pretty light. Next, when it comes to the tools of deadly force, I carry a Glock 23. I carry the Glock 23 in, as I pointed out before, the belly band style holster. This is underneath my shirt, and I will show you. Most of the time I have a tie on, I leave the second button unbuttoned, and the draw on this is to simply reach in, grab a hold, get a good firing grip on the gun, get the arm clear so that you're not crossing your brachial artery, and there is the draw of a Glock 23. And I'll set that down. If you're in a dangerous enough environment to need uh, uh, to, to warrant carrying a gun, you probably also want to have a spare magazine, and that again is carried in the belly band. I carry the uh, full magazine with the Glock 23 for the Glock 23 on the opposite on my right side. Now, sometimes, but not always, I will carry a backup gun, and that is and I'm left-handed, so this is a left-handed holster. This is the Caltech P3AT. The P3AT is an awfully neat gun. One of the uh, criteria I use for my EDC is, in a, in a backup gun, I prefer to have the same style or type of action in both guns so that my finger knows one style of gun. And of course the trigger in a Glock is not, I know I'll start a, this will start a war on, uh, on YouTube comments, the trigger on the Glock is not exactly similar to the trigger on a Caltech P3AT, but they're similar in action type so that if your finger knows one it'll, it'll, it'll be familiar enough with the other. Uh, there are times when I carry two. I don't carry three, but I do carry two. And the uh, when I go, for instance, when I go to the range, I always carry a second gun than one that I carry uh, on the exterior on, on the exterior of my body. Sometimes, in place of the Glock 23, I will carry the Glock 27. The Glock 27 is a little smaller than the Glock 23. And it, uh, when I'm carrying it on my belt line, the 23 weighs my belt line down just a little too much. As you can see, I'm a little well curved, and uh, so it doesn't. The, my pants don't hold up the Glock 23 as well as the 27. So sometimes I'll substitute that if I'm carrying in an, on, on my belt line. Another thing, if you're carrying as a backup a 38 snub, this is a holster I found that is really neat. It's from a company called Tough Products out of California. They're out of San Diego. And uh, this is for a 38 snub. The sticky part of the holster is on the outside. The smooth is on the inside. It stays in your pocket. This breaks up the outline of the gun. But it's got a neat feature. On the end, it's got a five-shot speed loader. There's two dummy, only two dummy rounds loaded on it, but it is a five-shot speed loader. The reason a five-shot is significant is because it really fits down inside the holster and uh, makes a pretty discreet 10-round concealed carry if you're uh, looking for something like that. And again, that's tough products. They're out of uh, San Diego. Another thing I'd like to address is my EDC around the house. I call this my bathrobe EDC. Now, obviously, I'm not going to walk around inside my home uh, before I leave, before I get ready to leave the house. I'm not going to carry all this stuff because, well, frankly, I'd need a utility kilt, not a, uh, not a bathrobe. So, but I have what I call my household EDC. And my household EDC, I'm going to clear off some of these other things here. 
these two items being the Keltec P3AT, which goes in the bathrobe pocket on my left side because I'm left handed, and this. This is a cold steel Tonto, and uh, it's, it's been a, an excellent knife. I've used it, I've had this now for about 10 years, and it's been a very effective blade. And uh, I've never sharpened it, it's always maintained its edge. It's been an excellent blade, and it comes with this neck knife sheath. However, on this side, I put a spare ring of keys, again, a duplicate set, an exact duplicate set in the same order as all my other key rings. On here, I have put a, a lightweight LED light, and on this side, I have a tactical flashlight. This is the uh, Surefire EL1 flashlight, and, it, uh, and I keep the batteries fresh in it. And this I had added on by By Brown Industries, which is a local place here in Tucson that makes molded holsters. I had them mold this, and I had them attach it with a set of Chicago screws to my uh, to my neck knife on one side, and then keys on the other. It's pretty well balanced. The weight is fairly well balanced. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So that in a hurt, and this of course is a strap that goes around the neck. And so when I am looking to walk around, say I'm going to spend a day, a relaxed day at home, I'm in my robe or, 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 uh, or similar attire or very relaxed, casual household dress, I, take, I put this on my neck and then I have a tactical flashlight uh, when I press the button. I have a non-tactical flashlight if I want to read, read or see something, go through the house when it's dark. And I have keys to get into or out of everything. And I have a pistol in my pocket, be it in my, maybe in a, a pair of uh, shorts pocket or in my uh, bathrobe pocket. And um, <clears throat> the reason that I do everything, that I do everything I do, is that I use every single thing I carry. There's hardly more than one item in each pocket with the exception of pens. Oh, and by the way, my phone is in this top pocket here. Usually lives, usually lives in the same pocket with the two pens in my shirt pocket. I find it's handy enough to get to. I don't do anything, usually I don't do anything physically vigorous enough to lose the phone out of there. And uh, that's part of the, the daily carry. It can also go in the, in the other robe pocket and be part of my household carry. Um, <clears throat> carrying less things than this would, would not be in keeping with the scout motto to be prepared. It would also leave me with less than I use during the day. Uh, I, now people have asked me on, in commentary on this, well, you know, if you're carrying all that crap, why don't you carry armor and a rifle and a gas mask and condoms? Well, I have all those things. I have them in my bug out bag. I also have them in a vault in the back of the car. I do have a rifle, uh, an AR. I do have a gas mask. I do keep condoms in the in the in the kit. And I do have my. I carry my armor over my seat back in the uh, in the car. Now, my EDC is not based on uh, what has happened to me in the past, but it's based on what could happen. No, I don't live in a war zone. However, we do live within 65 miles of the border in, uh, here in Tucson. And it's quite possible that things, there could be spots of violence, and so I do keep the tools of preparedness for it. And uh, I am a state certified concealed weapons instructor, and everything I show here, you'll notice when you look at some of the things, you can see there's an awful lot of pocket wear on some of these items. This is not a theory, this is not something that I, I, just, I just thought up to do an EDC video on. This is actually the stuff that I carry every day, either inside the home in the case of things like this, or outside the home in the, in the case of the other things I've showed you. And um, thank you for your time. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.